Happy Friday, everybody. So good to see you. I haven't been on here and just done a live chat with you for a little while, really since I've been back from vacation. So um, I just thought I would uh, drop on in. <laughs> I can't even speak. I'm, I'm waiting to see if my dog's gonna come in and start barking. Um, maybe I should speak quieter so she doesn't know we're chatting. Um, but I thought I would jump in and talk about a topic that I get a lot and I do have some definite thoughts on it and I've actually learned a lot about it, especially as it pertains to myself and to others. And the topic is motivation. And I get this a lot from people. Um, when they tell me, I can't find my motivation. I can't find my motivation. I can't get motivated. I don't know what happened to my motivation. I don't know where my motivation went. I was motivated, but now I'm not motivated. I didn't know where it went. And it's like, we're all on this hunt for our motivation. It's like, we should put up wanted posters or you know, maybe get milk cartons and we can post our you know, missing motivation. You know, Have you seen mine? <laughs> and I'll look for yours and you, have you seen mine? I mean, and one of the most important things I learned from my personal development, and Stephen Covey talks about it, um, Darren Hardy talks about it, I mean, all the, the gurus, those personal growth gurus talk about it, but um, that, mo here's, what, here's what it is. Discipline is what remains after your motivation has gone. And so another way to say it, I was just looking here at Stephen Covey, he says, only the disciplined are truly free. The undisciplined are slaves to moods, appetites, and passions. And, and so now I'm kind of talking about discipline, but let's start with motivation. Motivation is your why. You know, and a lot of people talk about willpower. I really like to talk about why power. Why power is why you're doing what you're doing. So whatever it is in your life, I mean, I get it a lot of conversations that have to do with fitness um, and people are always telling me all the reasons why they can't do it, why they can't work out, why they can't eat right, why they don't have the time for this. They're always telling me all the reasons why. And they'll tell me the reasons why they can't do it right after they've told me the reason why they need to, right? They'll tell me they need to because they went to the doctor and the doctor told them, you know, that they were pre-diabetic and, and they don't want to go on medication, so they really want to get a handle on it. They'll tell me that the reason why they want to chat with me about their fitness and health is because they, you know, they're in their late 20s and they're already getting winded walking up the stairs and they have little kids and they, they know that they need to uh, be able to keep up with them. Um, they'll tell me that the reason they want to make a change in their health and fitness, their, their why, is because, um, you know, they just, they used to be that fit girl and, and they felt good and now they just don't feel good anymore. They're just, they don't like the way they feel, the way they look, and, and they really describe themselves very, very harshly. And I don't want to say all the things that they say, but it's very, very harsh. And, you know, when you feel that way about yourself, I mean, that doesn't feel good. And so they'll tell me their reason why, and then they'll immediately follow it up with all the reasons why not. And so it's really a very interesting, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's just a very interesting pattern of how we think about and what's important and what the priorities are. And, and even how we view ourselves, our strength, our willpower, if you will. We don't view ourselves as being very strong when it comes to being disciplined. We don't see ourselves as being very, as, as being in control of our choices. Um, a lot of times I think we view ourselves as being a victim of our circumstances. And it's almost like we're just floating around on the wind, you know, letting life just, you know, do this to us and we have no choice in the matter. Um, and my, and you know what, when you when you decide to take back your choice and to realize that you are empowered, that's really 
empowering. So that's really what I love to help people do is find their strong because that's what happened to me. I was able to find my strong and I don't just mean in the biceps, I mean in my mind and in my heart. And you know, that's why I believe that so much of what you need to change in your life really starts with how you think. And so that's why we're talking about how you think. You, 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 your motivation. Oh my gosh, I just got back from the doctor and man, he told me that if I keep going like I'm going, I'm going to be on diabetes medication by the time I'm 30 and you know, blah, 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 blah. And I know my, you know, my mom, she, you know, had early heart attack. I mean, all these things you're motivated. See, motivation is your why, like you're motivated or maybe I posted some pics of somebody in my workout group and, and you saw their results and you're like, wow, that's amazing. And Wow, if they can do that, so can I. And you're motivated. You're motivated. It's, it's a feeling. Motivation is a feeling, right? It's a feeling. Um, and we talk and you're motivated and then you start all the reasons why not. So now your why is now turning into a big fat why not. And your motivation is already dying. Your motivation has already started running off and you're just looking at it running into the distance. And then you're telling me, I just don't know where my motivation is. I don't know where it went. Well, here's the thing. Motivation, it can be very powerful because it is the thing that oftentimes spurs you to take action. But if you, if you rely solely on motivation, then you're never going to actually take the action because guess what? Motivation comes and goes. Motivation is fleeting. Motivation ebbs and flows. It ebbs whenever you've had a really long day at work and you're super tired and you were super motivated in the morning, you were gonna get your workout done and then they had a, the kids had a snow day so now your whole schedule's off and you have to find, a, you have to get up and take them to daycare and now your day's off and you didn't get your workout done, so now you're in a bad mood and you're too tired when you got home. And man, I had all these good intentions and see, I just can't do it, I just don't have time. So now your motivation has gone. It's like, where'd it go? Okay? So you can't rely on motivation. Now, you can find ways to motivate yourself. You can find ways to recharge your motivation and that's what I do. That's what we do in my challenge groups. That's what I do as a coach is I help you recharge your motivation. I, I remind my clients of why they started. Um, and together as a community of fit-minded people in our challenge groups, we each remind each other of why. It's like, hey, I know, you know, hey, good for you for pushing play, even though you had that super long day. And you know what? Now we're starting to develop discipline. And I love this. Um, I just read this too. I've got to read it to you. Discipline. Discipline is a muscle that gets stronger the more you flex it. Discipline is doing what you need to do even after the feeling, the motivation for doing it has gone. You're not gonna be motivated every day. I mean, if you keep flexing your self-discipline muscle long enough, you will find that your motivation isn't such a invisible little thing. It doesn't keep running away, that it actually will stay with you because you now you're disciplined and now you understand how your motivation and your discipline work together, right? And you understand that, you know what? Even though I, I didn't feel motivated to do X, I still was disciplined enough to do it and it's motivating to me that I was able to make that shift and now I'm still moving towards my goal. And your goal can be fitness, it can be weight loss, it can be um, you know, becoming more spiritual, it can be you know, a new job, it can be taking the steps to find a new career, it can be a lot of different things, whatever it is. You know, I, I remember, you know, when I was in my old job, I would get really motivated to start looking for a new job, you know, because things were not so great. I'd been there a really long time and, you know, they would just, things would just take a dump and um, I just suddenly, I'd be super motivated, super motivated to get out there, put my resume out there and all that. And then 
I would do a little bit and then things would kind of, you know, die down and get back into a routine at work and, you know, man, it's really hard to start interviewing and, you know, and I have to start looking for the right job and got to go buy a suit because I don't have any suits because we're all business casual here and, you know, gosh, can you imagine at my age going to start work at a new company? I mean, the motivation starts to run away, right? It starts to run away. Um, so it happens, right? And then, you know, you get hit with a pie in the face and all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, I got to do this. I got to get motivated to do this. So you create your own motivation, but you cannot let your, your discipline, you can't let yourself be ruled by whether or not motivation is there because it oftentimes isn't. I do not wake up every day motivated to do all the things that I need to do. I, I'm not motivated any day to wash my face before I go to bed. I'm not motivated at all. Not at all. But I've developed a discipline to do that. I've developed the discipline. It's just like any of the disciplines you have in your life. Um, yeah, I mean, you could say I'm motivated to brush my teeth every day because I don't want to have cavities. Well, you know, you go to the dentist twice a year. I mean, you're, you're really not thinking about, you know, not getting cavities. You're thinking about just discipline, right? It's just a habit. It's just I do it. And so what I want to say to you is, you know, motivation and discipline can work hand in hand. Motivation is your initial inspiration. It's your, re it's your giddy up and go. It says, okay, I, I need to take action. I've got this feeling. I've got this why. When you lose your initial inspiration, though, self-discipline is what keeps you going. And so that's the hard part. So, you know, if you say to me, instead of saying, I don't know why I can get, can't get started. I just don't have the motivation. I think the more appropriate response is, you know, Deb, I, I just i am having a hard time developing the discipline to do this. And so that's where I really need the help, right? Because your motivation, you already know what it is. You've already told me. You've already told me that you're tired of feeling, you know, unhealthy and overweight and no energy and hating how you look in the mirror and not being able to keep up with your kids. And you've already told me that you're really scared that you're going to have to go on medication for your high cholesterol and your diabetes. And, you know, you have a family history of things like this. And you're really, you've already told me why. You already know what your inspiration is. Where you need is that self-discipline. And so that's why I want you to think about whenever it's any kind of decision, especially life-changing ones, you know, where you feel motivated to do something, you know you need to do it. I mean, like for me, I knew I needed to stop drinking alcohol. And you know, I had a lot of motivation in the beginning, right? But I'm telling you, you know, after you, 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 you know, you stop drinking and then all of a sudden you're like, man, you know, it's hard to keep the motivation. I mean, this is just a really extreme example. And now I have the discipline. I have developed the discipline to live the life, to do what I need to do. And I have to say, my motivation to keep doing it is even greater than it was in the beginning, right? Even though the initial reason for my, my desire to, to make that change is far behind me, you know, I know now that with the discipline that I've developed around that habit and the blessings that I have in my life, that it's totally worth it, right? And so that's, that's what I want you to think about. Um, we are thinking about making these kinds of changes in your life is, you know, what, what is this going to do to my life and is it worth it? Because I'm telling you that once you do the action and you start getting the results, your motivation will increase. It will start to stick around a lot longer. And I want to remind you too, when you're talking about fitness and health, that every single day, you make a decision to do the right thing, to do your workout, to make better food choices. Every day that you do that is a day of success. I don't want you just to focus on the number on the scale or you know the superficial things. I mean, those are important. I mean, the, the numbers, I mean, if you're overweight and you need to lose weight for your, your cholesterol, I think that's very important. But I don't want you to let that be your motivation right? Your motivation for making a lifestyle change in your health and fitness is a healthier lifestyle. So I just had to throw that in there. Um, but anyway, I've taken up enough of your time now and I want to let you go, but 
Um, I will um, chat with you later. Thanks for tuning in and listening. Have a happy Friday, and I will talk with you guys soon. See you later.